Welcome back to another episode of Veg Networking Canada, where vegan plant-based companies connect and collaborate. It is important to honor, acknowledge, and respect that we are located on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territories of many Indigenous peoples of Canada. Today, we have a special guest with us who lived a tumultuous childhood and previously faced life in prison as an adult, independently published author and the book of the book, 27th Letters. Along with being a freelance filmmaker and photographer, he is a champion for holistic living. Veg Networking Canada is pleased to introduce the co-founder and owner of Five Principles Cuisines. Welcome, Lanre Onigbinde Bay. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. Thank you for having me. We're thrilled to have you. We're thrilled to hear more about your business, what you got going on, and more about you personally. So starting with that, can you tell us what led you to go vegan? Oh, for sure. Also, I don't want to forget Sandra, because she's the one that I really connected with and put me on to, to, to Veg Network. But yeah, to answer your question, um, my background, the, the the culture that I grew up in, it's heavily entrenched in meat in the diet. You know what I mean? Animal eating, of course, you know? unfortunately. But um, as I got older, um, I, I remember I used to have um, stomach pains and it was like consistent. And ironically, I think it started when we migrated here because I think that's when I got introduced to like milk and cheese and stuff like that because you already know um, human beings are lack naturally lactose intolerant. We just adapt to doing it this way. But so for me personally, I, I didn't drink. I don't. Like, I wasn't introduced to that dairy early on in life. So I think that had a, a lot to do with the stomach pains that I would have. And then also, <clears throat> even like having regular bowel movements and stuff. So like, like I said, like starchy food, like the culture I grew up in. So as I got older in my early twenties, when I was. Uh, incarcerated as you as you mentioned um is when I really started taking the time because I obviously I had the time to look at uh monitor what I eat and how what it does to me and so on and so forth eventually you know cut out chicken I mean yeah obviously I cut out meat chicken and it was gradual everything was gradual and maybe um I don't know eight years ago 12 years ago I can't remember exactly, but around that time, I um, cut out uh, dairy, which was the one that most people have a hard time with. But um, so, yeah, and then eventually I just became a vegan, you know, and here I am. Amazing. So the next question for you is about your entrepreneurial origin story. Um, feel free to just jump right into that and or okay. if there is anything you know in the bio that we mentioned like tumultuous childhood you know incarceration anything like that maybe that has to do with the entrepreneurial origin story or maybe yeah, it doesn't oh, yeah, 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 okay yeah. so tell us more about that so um with my background being uh, from, from being incarcerated you have naturally a criminal record so um for me um seeking jobs and applying for jobs all they have to do to say no is just realize that I have a criminal record. And I'm not one to prone to just beg and wait and hope and so on and so forth. So forth. I, you know, take matters into my own hand. And to back, my background, as far as my mother, the influence she has on me as being an entrepreneur and so on, is uh, back where, where, where I was born, which was like in the late 70s, early 80s. She had her own successful uh, uh, business, you know? She was a pastry chef. So she would often make sandwiches and so on and so forth and go to work sites and sell it. And then eventually she she grew from there to the point that she was even buying machines from Germany to, to use for, for, her, for her business. So that's how successful she became, you know? Like I went to a private school, so it was, it was it was, it was it was it was good for her and so she has that she had that drive and that's why I got it from so when I came out of, of 
of prison in 2010, it was obvious that this is the, this is the only route for me. It was like sink or swim because, like I said, is I mean, I, I have so much to offer, you know. So I just didn't want to just, you know, which is nothing wrong with it. You can just get a construction job, which is something in that regard, you know. It's nothing wrong with that, but um, I I, I, had a, I had a little skill that could pay the bills, so I figured I could, you know, utilize that, you know. So so growing up in the kitchen and then even growing uh, as, a, as a teenager, I worked at, at McDonald's, obviously, this way before I became vegan. Uh, I was a prep manager at Casey's Bar and Grill at one point, uh, and then I was a kitchen manager for this seafood restaurant called the Black Sea Bass. And then, um, and then spent years incarcerated. So after I got out, again, that's when I said, you know what, I'm going to already make the transition to being vegan at that point. So um, people knew I could cook. So it started with me doing little uh, parties, catering people, asked me to cater their, their parties. So, and then that turned into, you know what, let's make this official and set up a web website, got, came up with the logo, and that's it's where, we're, it's where we're at now, you know? And, um, and and on top of that, you know, when you work for corporations, especially nowadays, <laughs> I'm very vocal, so I'm pretty sure I'm gonna say something that upset whatever company I work for. So that's another reason why I need to be an entrepreneur. Free speech is, 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 is golden to me, you know? And I, and I don't think uh, it's, it's worth any, paycheck and so when uh 2010 sort of made the decision to kind of do your own thing when did that actually start when did your business start oh 20 because i got <clears throat> i got out 27 i mean 2010 april 23rd 2010 and then um the you know doing the little catering for people was around 2016 and then everything kind of became official shortly after that, like 2017, you know? And then and I think we started doing our brunches because we do brunches um, during this during the season, during the summer season and during the fall season, every four or five weeks, we do brunches. I get, I rent out a space and I do all you can eat vegan brunch. We actually have one coming up this uh, August 11, 560 Danforth, so if you're in Toronto, come out, you can check out the event. Um, um, RSVP on Eventbrite, but um, yeah. And so, so your you brand. Tell us a little yeah, bit more. You, you about, got mute. You got mute for a sec. So tell us a little bit more about Five Principles Cuisines, and also where is your brand going in the future? Okay, Fire Principle Cuisine is a meal prep service <clears throat> and catering service, obviously. And uh, we're strictly online, so we don't have a brick and mortar. Uh, like that, that really helped us to stay afloat during uh, the pandemic because, you know, with, without having events, which is how we, this is how I grew. Because prior to the pandemic, from 2017 to when the pandemic was, we had we were growing like the momentum and then all that momentum got shut down. So now post pandemic, you know, just surviving the pandemic, um, we, we, I'm, I'm getting back out there to uh, really promote, you know, promote the, uh, the brand. So um, if you go online, order, order food and I make delivery twice a week, um, we deliver on, uh, on Sunday and Wednesday. Uh, so our week that begins on, on on Sunday, and also I deliver twice a week because I, you know to maintain fresh freshness. So usually there's a minimum of a uh, fifty dollar order. Or, or right now we have a package deal where it's like an introduction introductory drip deal, which a lot of people like to do. Uh, it's ninety dollars for ten meals, and so like that it will work out where it's like. I'll deliver five meals on Sunday and then and the other five on on on, uh, on Wednesday, you know. So yeah, that that's the deals. And then that's another thing with the whole price gouging thing. It's I know we like we might like five principal cuisines as far as vegan food in Toronto. We have the best price. You know what I mean? Like for 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 what you're getting at, at the price that we charge, come on, 
you know, and, and you're not losing any type of quality. We, we, surpass, we suppress, our quality surpasses a lot of other people who charge more, you know. I'm not saying we're the greatest, but as far as cooking, but, you know, the price fits what you're getting and you're going to be happy with it. So um, I know I know there's a lot of pressure for many businesses to raise raise the price with the whole price gouging that's going on, but I refuse to participate. You know, that's just, that's just my nature. I, re, I refuse to participate in a lot of stuff that everybody's doing. So uh, yeah, so um, as far as uh, where, where we're going, um, well, I just recently uh, launched the the the, the mer uh, merch line. So you can go on uh, on uh, fireprinciplescuisines.com. And also, um, I started blogging. So there's a blog on the page where, you know, I just speak on anything related to um, um, food, vegan food. I think I, my last post was about uh, uh, the best refreshing, uh, the qualities, what, what you need to make the best refreshing lemonade. You know, I mean, the, uh, you know, simple things, you know, just to, just to help people. Uh, there's, I have ones where there's a menu, I mean, a uh, um, um, recipe to do different things, you know? So that's that's on the blog. And then um, recently I thought about um, with, with all these closures that's happening with restaurants, especially the uh, vegan restaurants, I don't know how it is out in Vancouver, if you guys noticed it, but out here, it's like, it's, it's crazy. It's like every other month, there's another vegan restaurant closing. And um, so, like I said, I have, you know, in your introduction, I have a background in um, film, film and uh, photography, and I use that a lot to promote my business. So, you know, any, any type of uh, media that I need to film or do, I do, I do it in-house. I do a lot of things in-house. But... Um, so one of the things I want to do is start highlighting, you know, I know there's a, it's, it's, it's trendy. It's been trendy, you know, people who are, food, food is trendy, you know, just in general. Um, so I'm thinking about, uh, not thinking, I'm going to start uh, vlogging. I'm going to visit other uh, vegan establishment and just highlighting what they have to offer as far as food, you know. So we're going to have, uh, it's going to be called a uh, 5PC uh, Vegan Bites Review. So I, hopefully what I want, the plan is to, uh, you know, start within the city and then branch off, try to reach out to other, other um, vegan establishments within Ontario. And who knows, maybe I start visiting, I might come out to Vancouver, and, you know, film you guys, show me some spots, show me, bring me to your favorite spots and we're filming, you know, I like it. Because we got to take matters into our own hands. We can't just sit here and just let the quote unquote, inflation kick our ass, you know, and just allow these things to happen, which a lot of humans do. You know, we allow the government to do a lot of things they do because what we do is really complain, 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 complain. You know, I'm not really into that. Like I said, that's why part of the reason why I'm an entrepreneur. I can't sit there and just play a victim, you know? So I just want to help, you know, highlight, highlight other businesses. And I'm not, you know, for some people it's hard. You know, they want, you know, they, they might be shy to promote other vegan uh, brands that might be doing, doing similar things. But I feel like we, you know, for lack of a better word, we all could eat. Everybody could, you know, it's not that serious, you know. So, you know, so yeah, that's, 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 that's the future. That's what we're working on within, within the brand. And uh, also for myself personally, as, as, uh, as Chef Landry, um, just to promote the brand, but more important, just to promote my story and, and myself, because you know, like you already know, like how many times you guys get to sit down and talk to a person that was serving life. So I feel like that's that 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 story within itself is important. And as a vegan, I feel like I, I need to, you know, talk about my journey as a vegan and also share my my story of being incarcerated and so on and so forth. So I'm trying to not trying, but I'm gonna I wanna, I wanna be um, a presenter at. at uh, vegan step uh, festivals. I talked to Sandra about that. So I hope she, hopefully, you guys have more leads on that too. So uh, you know, I want to be getting out there more and uh, promote myself as Chef Landry and put my story and so on and so forth at these vegan festivals. Yeah, I mean, we're not going to digress and and get off track, but you're absolutely right. In my mind, I'm thinking 
let's have a whole conversation about how someone goes from a sentence of serving life to being out and having their own business like that sounds like a movie um it's also really cool <laughs> yeah yeah hopefully that's 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 the plan that one day maybe i run into 50 cents or one of these big producers out there and uh, i pitch him my 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 life story because it seems like that's you know that's 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 in vogue right now because if you go to um netflix there's a lot of you know prison like stories and so on and so forth so it's trendy right now so i know you know and you know, it's also it's also intriguing for people because not everybody goes to prison. You know, you just see it on TV and so on and so forth. And then to be able to talk to somebody because not not everybody is the same right? even after prison. And it, like it, it it's it's a mental it's a mental anguish thing that you gotta you gotta overcome as far as being incarcerated. So people who get some more, most people get incarcerated, they're not really open about the background and you know unless it has to do with work per se but with me i'm very open i'm an open book i feel like it's a disservice to my mankind if if a man has a story and lessons to share and he doesn't you know what i mean like how do we how are we supposed to evolve you know i've, I've learned many i've learned many things from other people's story you know so i feel that's that's important it's also really cool to hear about what came to mind when you were talking about you going out and vlogging to other restaurants it's really cool to big up and and help out other restaurants and collaborate in that way the the title that came to my mind was land rate eats vegan that's what i was <laughs> um yeah. so but, and that's cool too man, but it's the brand you know like yeah, i've been fall i've been listening to sandra a lot lately so she's kind of got me brain was thinking about the brand Awesome. Yes, there's the brand and then there's the personal brand and they're definitely yeah, married yeah. together. So we've we've had we've had um other um guests here who have a CPG company or or a restaurant or, or food service business or whatever it might be and you know the business in and of itself is sort of a transformation or a trend within the broader industry, but that's the question for you like what are some transformations or trends in your industry? Well, right now, um, we've got the festival, right? There's an influx of festivals that, that weren't available maybe 10 years ago. And I think <laughs> I think it might be saturated. I don't want to complain, but it's like, man, I, there's a lot of festivals, you know? So, um, and then again, even like doing the brunches, the pop-up brunches, those, 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 are, those are things that um, um, I myself uh, partake in. And um, yeah, and um, just being more visible, you know I me mean? having more of a footprint on social media is, is, I mean, it's pretty much everything these days. You know what I mean? Like when you look outside, ever so often when I go outside, I like to, you know, in that, because I don't want to act like I'm better than anybody else. But, you know, in that five minutes or so, 10 minutes, I like to see, look, Look around because I like to watch it. And like, oh, there's a lot of people out there are always on their phone. Like, I mean, always on their phone. So, you know, and like I said, I'm guilty too. But sometimes I, you know, I become conscious and try to look around. Like, holy, you know, nobody's really paying attention. Everybody's on the phone. So, digital footprint, footprint as a brand is, is very important. And that's, that's the big trendy thing, you know. Um, yeah. Again. That, that like doing the 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 five PC uh, vegan vegan eats review would be part of me leaving a uh, digital footprint. So that's 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 those are the things I see so far. You know? Yeah, and and to that end too, um, which you touched on briefly, that is like a hopefully not a trend that's going to go away, but more of a transformation where like businesses really truly do support other businesses and make it visible for other people right so it's that's it's, awesome. it's it's a human it, it, it they, we've been tricked to think that we got to compete with each other and we don't need to because it's like how big is your belly brother like relax <laughs> you know what i mean like you make the our, our, our belly our stomach is as big as the fist we make like how much food do you want to eat how much do you want to store in your barn relax you know, we can share. It's not that serious. There's enough room for everybody to eat at the table. That's for sure. So um, 
no right or wrong answers here. Sometimes people answer from what they do personally, what they do with their business, what they've done in the past, what they're currently doing, what they have plans to do in the future. But the question is around giving back and charity. So what does that mean to you? What does that mean to your business? So um, you guys know, again, back to my background about my story, me sharing my background. That's part of my charitable donation is um, I'm a mentor to a lot of the youths out here. I work with uh, uh, D2R, um, which is Dream to Reality. I work with uh, other organizations like uh, RRS, Re uh, Redemption Reintegration Services. Um, like even far as far as I can't remember the other organization, but um, Tropicana, I work with Tropicana. Tropicana actually, um, not only did I work with them as far as working in mentorship, I also, um, they actually uh, um, hired me to cater one of their events, you know, as five principles. So it was kind of a, a, a really cool experience working with a nonprofit like that in that regards, because I was able to display both of, of what I have to offer. So yeah, so doing that, that that's important to me, like I said. And then I have 27 letters dot com which is basically tells you about my story and that's where you can get my book 27 letters which is uh based on uh the book is based on the letters i wrote my daughter while i was incarcerated because when i got incarcerated um she was a year and a half and uh when i came back when I, by the time i got out she was like nine almost ten so um but um you know when i when you get incarcerated sometimes they, you know relationships sour so it is what it is which i have no issue with but i just never got to see my daughter so um uh, me, me and her mom were kind of odds in, in that regards because you know that's all i asked for is, is let, let me see her let me have an open line of communication with her which i really didn't so out of frustration i was i was telling one of my one of the guys i was locked up with what you know what i was going through and he was like why don't you start writing and then that's when I started writing. I wrote the first letter in 2005, and I wrote I wrote the letter once a month. And uh, the first letter I wrote was uh, December 2005 uh, on 27th. So I just kept up with that date. So on the 27th, that's when I would send out the letter, the letter and send, send it out to her till I came out. So each for for every month since 2000 out since 2005 to 2010, I, I wrote a letter. So after I came out, you know, I still had um, a little bit of um, issue seeing her parental, parental alienation. Even after the hurdle I faced of, of a life sentence, I still had to, you know, deal with some issues coming out. So in dealing with that, I was like, you know, as far as, you know, I think that was part of my therapy, you know, just publishing this letter, you know, because I, mean? I really wanted to share my story and, you know, what some, some, some of that person like myself is going through, you know. So that's that's how I got to print, uh, publish the book, uh, Twenty Seventh Letters, and then I, uh, along with that, I also have um, blogs on that. And with those blogs, on like five principle blogs, these ones are more personal. They're just talking about you know experiences and so on and so forth, and you know uh, sometimes I might touch on world issues and so on and so forth. But it's just me impart my wisdom through, through the blogs and it's a way to drive traffic on, on, on the site too and i recently started a merch for that too 27 letter podcast that's another thing i have is the, is the podcast so i have the podcast 27 letter podcast which i started maybe i don't know 2017 oh no 2018 or 2019 so i have a few interviews with uh individuals who have interesting life stories so, you know, I, I want to be more consistent with it, but with the pandemic and everything shutting down, I, I slowed down on it. But so, yeah, I have that too. So 27th Letter Podcast, so there's a merch for that as well. So, yeah, this is how I, this is how I you know what I mean? This is how I do my thing. That's why it's uh, giving back. It's just really sharing my story. Like I said, I think it's a disservice to, to mankind for, for me to have gone through what I went through and not share it with, with the world, you know? Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing those organizations. It's so great. And more about what you have going on, which kind of leads into the next question, because you have built or created your own 
resources, if you will. And that's the next question is um, specific for entrepreneurs and business owners. What are some resources like books or podcasts or apps that you would recommend? So because for me, uh, like business wise, it's like I don't I don't fit the traditional businessman mode. You know what I mean? So for me, um, just being myself and selling my my story and just being able to offer my skills, giving give let me offer my skills as a, as a vegan chef is 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 really how um how I do my thing. Um, there are there are podcasts that I listen to, just like Sandra that I listen to, you know. So um, one of the podcasts I listen to is um, Urban X, uh, Urban X. It's uh it's this two uh, it's father and son podcast. Find on YouTube. Um, they, they 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 touch on 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 what's what what uh what what would need more like chat chat GBT. I heard about it for the first time through them. You know what I mean? Those so little tidbits that it drop now and then. Um, and um, as far as books, the books that I read are really surrounded on on um growth, self growth, because. I feel for me personally, as a business person, like entrepreneur, like the gentleman Sh Shani just went through a rejection. These, like, I've went through the worst in life. So dealing with a rejection is like, oh, well, you know, you know, as long as any day above ground is a good day for me. So I really invest in uh, myself uh, uh, in reading self help books and so on and so forth. Like, uh, one of my favorite is uh, uh, Peaceful Warrior. By Dan, uh, Dan Millman, Celestine Prophes Prophecy. Uh, and that's, that's, that's another one. Um, um, and then also coming out of um, prison, before I went in, the internet wasn't really a thing. I went in in 2002. So in 2010, going on YouTube was like, oh, so like, YouTube was a big resource for me for a lot of things. You know, like people joke about having a YouTube degree, which I don't think anything is wrong with it, because it's like people are learning online anyways nowadays, whether you're on YouTube or in class or some type of school. So it is the same. So yeah, I, I pride myself on my YouTube degree. And uh yeah, that's about it. And then and then there's there's other other uh, organizations that I reach out to that I work with. Uh, that 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 was highlighting my story and, and highlighting the brand like uh, Veg Out podcast and Calling All Vegan uh, podcast. And they, I just did a piece of, a piece with them. I gotta put it. That reminds me. I gotta put it on, on my on my website. Yeah, I forgot to put it on the website. But yeah, those those podcasts out there. You know, it's just like yourself. You know, that yeah, you know, reaching out to people like yourself and Sandra is 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 part of. My, my business, my business uh, aim. Excellent. Now, in terms of inspiration, um, you might take it like others have before where we've had everything. We've had people humbly, honestly, sincerely, humbly talk about how they themselves are their own inspiration. And I could see that in you, like what you've gone through and where you are, like that's definitely for sure. We've had people talk about nature and other individuals or organizations, but the question is kind of like open-ended. What is inspiration to you and what does it mean? The people inspire me. The people and nature inspire me. Life itself is, it inspired me. Oh, the five principles. It means uh, love, truth, uh, peace, freedom, and justice. You know, actually, uh, you can check out the, the uh, on the blog, um, five principles. Uh, dot com. I have a blog, a whole post breaking down what the five principles mean in correlation to how we, how five, uh, how we uh, operate, operate as a vegan uh, uh, online business. So you know, um, but um, as far as inspiration, back to your question, Justin. Um, yeah. So the people like life itself inspires me. If you're not, if you're not, like you gotta have a purpose-driven life. You know, like. Um, 
I've been through a lot, you know, being from being physically abused by my own father and going and during that, I had to live at a live at a group home, which you know, like the first time I ever been to a police station was because I was being beaten and been able to call the cops and I got taken out of home. So, you know, like my story alone, you know, it, it inspires me, you know. But I'm also a book reader, so especially with obviously from being incarcerated, but prior to being incarcerated, I, I've always enjoyed reading books. So most of the books I read, like I said, I read is basically about people's journey, you know, autobiographies and so on and so forth. People's going through stuff in life. And as crazy as my journey has been, you know, I know it could be worse. There's people who's gone through worse where I was like, there's times when I was incarcerated and I'm reading a book on somebody and I, I look around me and a little TV. I'm in a jail cell. Yeah, I get that. A little TV. I got a little video game that I can play. You know, if I want to snack a little, there's a little couple of snacks. So even within those prison walls, I was grateful because I know it could be worse. You know, so life itself inspires me, and and other people's stories inspire me. You know, as well as well as well as my family. You know, um, being in, I have four children. And um, since Fritz has been out of prison, I have, I have three, you know, me and my empress have three. So, you know, so they like, man, especially with what I went through with my firstborn, just being absent, you know. So just this experience you know, raising these three children, you know, that invigorates me, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Before we get to the last question, uh, we have another question here. Um, well, let's just do the two. So with this live, so quick, quickly tell us again, just quick. What are the five principles? Love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Okay, absolutely amazing. So we have a second question here that came in right now, which is, what is Five Principles Cuisine's number one struggle these days? Well, it's just getting that momentum back that we had prior to, pan to the pandemic, you know? But I, again, I'm up for the challenge, you know what I mean? I'm up for the challenge because um, during the pandemic, I had my fa my last my last child, which is my daughter. And uh, she's four now, she's about to start school. But um, so during the pandemic, nobody was active. So we were inactive for a while, you know, because like I said, uh, the way we grew, the way Five Principles grew was through events, you know, we had to be out there, you know, because we're, we're small, we're a small uh, uh, business. So, so the uh, operating budget is not like other business that might be able to throw a couple of thousand dollars on, uh, on, on promoting themselves and so on and so forth. And even that within itself is not guaranteed to yield much, you know. So, uh, and, and, and me personally, I just like being out there you know, i feel like I'm, I'm old school like that you know i mean meeting people talking to them and, you know and just making a connection I, I feel like those those that's where the brand is that's the core of the brand is just those connections that i make you know well we're super happy here at veg network in canada to to chat with you today and kind of play a little bit of a part in uh regaining rebuilding revitalizing that momentum um, and it's been a pleasure to chat with you. And we have one last question for you, which is pretty, a pretty kind of, you know, big one, which is, do you have any advice, lessons, or tips for other entrepreneurs? Definitely. Um, first of all, um, like I said, there's room on the table. There's room at, like you said, Justin, there's room at the table for us to eat. So don't be afraid to partner up and with people who do the same thing you do. You know what I mean? We're, we're community community within the community you know what i mean so that's that's what's great about it is that we we all we all share an interest so why not push each other you know so and then be crazy in love with what you do you know like there's no other way to put it as an entrepreneur you got to be crazy in love with what you do because you guys know there's those days we have those days we have those days those those doubts i go through it i'm not sitting here like Every day is like, uh, you know, I, I have to get off the mat a few times. I've, I've had, obviously, I've had to pay up a few, a few times. I have to get off the mat and get back up. 
So, you know, just decreasing love to what you do. And like I said, with this life that we, this experience, this experience I'm having with life, I, I you know what I mean? I, I love it, you know what I mean? The, the ups and down, you know what I mean? I, I, I love it because they say what it is, uh, it's not about the destination, it's the journey, right? And because, uh, you know, even after we leave this realm, you know, when we transition, or as they call it, or we die, you want to be able to leave an impact that that, that resonates through, through time. And uh, I feel like that, that's, the, that's, the, that's the truest of, 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 like that's the meaning of the human experience, You're trying, trying to live it, make the connection, and then live it, leave an, an impact. And I think um, us as, as the vegan community, um, we, we we all strive for that collectively, obviously, from uh, based on our lifestyle. I know sometimes, you know, the outsiders, the people who are still eating meat or who just have a thing against vegans, which is weird to me, but okay, you know, so, so they, you know, they, they might you know, make fun of us and so on and so forth, you know? It, as long as we got each other, it doesn't matter. We know what it is. We know, what, we know why we're vegans and why we do what we do, you know? And and my my last thing I gotta say is whatever you do, wherever you may be, whatever you're going through, just keep your heart pure. That's how I survived. I always kept my heart pure, no matter what I was going through. You know, there's that I did get upset and so on and so forth. Like I said, I'm human, but I always keep my heart pure. You know. Well, Lenry, not only is it not about the destination, some even say it's not necessarily about the journey, but it's who you spend your time with on that journey. So we are very happy to spend some time with you here right now. And before I let it, before we let everybody know your website and your Instagram, is there anything in the conversation that you want to go back to or that we missed or any announcements? Um, no, not really. Not, 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 not really. You can tell us that you can tell us about your event one last time, uh, August 11th. Yes, August 11th, 560 Danforth, uh, 1130 to 130. Uh, or you can eat vegan brunch. Uh, I think it's, yeah, it's, it's going to be our last one for the season. Uh, it's again, these things that for me, I make it cost effective for, for us because again, I'm running this price gouge and I see somebody doing a similar brunch for like, the person charging like $70, $80. I'm like, Relax. What are we doing here? <laughs> like I said, how big is how big is your stomach, yo? You know, so you know, you guys come out. Uh, we have a plethora of, uh, of of options. I think we have like sixteen items usually. Um, you can check out our blog. I did a whole blog on the process of what it takes. I wrote about it on on fiveprinciples.com. You can check out that blog, and you can get get an idea of what it takes because I pretty much cook for for like 10 hours straight, you know, just to get this thing done every time we have these brunches. So August 11th, 11, uh, 1130 to 1.30, Eventbrite, you can uh, RSVP through that, or you can just come to uh, the website, you can RSVP through the website, we have an events uh, tab there, or five prin principles, uh, uh, cuisines vegan on um, Instagram, Link is in our bio there. That's we are on social media, Facebook page. Link is in our bio there too. You DM me if you have any leads as far as um the um festivals and so on and so forth. If you're interested in having me come out, email me five principles cuisines at gmail.com or you can just simply call 416-357-4345. You know, give me a call. I'm gonna bite. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah. And then also we have the YouTube page too. We have, we have a couple of cooking tutorials on our YouTube page. And uh, I need to ramp that up. That's another thing I I feel to mention as far as uh, uh, digital fo footprint is the, is the cooking tutorials that we have on our YouTube page. Len Ray, thank you so much. Again, everybody, you can check out more online. Five, literally the number five. So five yeah. principles, cuisines plural cuisines plural five yeah. principles cuisines.com and on instagram it's at it's at five principles cuisines vegan underscore yeah 
Len Ray, thank you so much. Everybody, uh, thank you for joining us on another episode of Veg Networking Canada. We were pleased to chat with the co-founder and owner of Five Principles Cuisines, Len Ray Onigbinde Bay. Thank you, sir, for joining us today. Everybody, thank you for listening, and we'll catch you soon on another episode. Take care. Bye for now. Peace.